let's make a stitch pattern. Today we're working on the herringbone stitch. You can see I've got two different samples worked with actually the same yarn, but I've used two different needles. And so I do want to show you that it has a very different look and feel depending upon the needle size. It does produce a nice flat fabric and it looks like it's woven. And on the back, it has um, a ribbed effect if you uh, turn it sideways. And it's again, a very dense and almost tough fabric. And if you uh, make your needle size a little bit larger, you can have it a little bit more supple, a little bit softer, but it's still a nice, strong fabric either way with a beautiful herringbone design. This is a easy pattern to do. I wouldn't say it's a beginner one, but you can absolutely do it. If you are a beginner, I suggest working with the larger needles. So let's jump into learning this two stitch pattern repeat today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To get the written pattern as well as information on the needles and yarn used, please click on the video description down below and you'll see the link there. We do have a pattern for a full square on this, including a 12 by 12 and a seven by nine in both sizes. And those would be just making for your own use or if you wanna make the seven by nine for Warm Up America blankets. And more information again is down in the links below. If you need the right or left-handed video, please click down uh, in the description below again to find the links for those videos. And the uh, left-handed video is reversed. I'm a right-handed knitter, and so I will be making it that way, but you can get that reversed uh, video again down below. Before we begin, I want to emphasize how important it is to make sure that your tension is not too tight when you make this stitch. So I will reiterate that right when we begin on row one, but I do want to show you this little sample here. So uh, this one is showing it with my smaller needles. I was using a US uh, 7. Uh, these over here are US 10. And you can see how this um, bind off looks a little bit loose. In fact, I had to knit two together at the end a couple of times to make sure that it was uh, not too loose. So if you are a little bit too tight here or a lot too tight, you could run into a situation where uh, it's just... Um, your bind off is not going to work. It's going to look like really loose. In fact, if I just, um, I had another sample here and I had done uh, this one and I actually had to knit two together across in my bind off all the way across. You can see how this bind off uh, does not look the same as this one because there's like half as many stitches literally and it really doesn't match my cast on. So I just wanted to um, let you be aware of that and see how tight this one was. And it does roll this direction so uh, you can still stitch it to something else so that it doesn't roll or you can add on an end to uh, either of those ends to combat that. And of course if you want to slip stitches or pick them up different on the sides you can do that as well. So that's just something to know about this stitch. So you're going to cast on uh, any number of stitches, whether it's even or odd, it doesn't matter on this one. It is a two row repeat. Now for this medium worsted weight yarn, if you want to make the sample like I've made here with the US 10 needles, then you're going to need to cast on 69 stitches for a 12 by 12 size. Or if you want to use the US 7s in the same yarn, you could cast on 75 stitches and uh, you should be able to get a 12 by 12 in that as well. And that's of course my gauge. So go ahead and cast on, pause your video, and I'll meet you for row one. See you soon. Okay, so I've got a long tail cast on. You've seen, I've uh, done uh, several of these rows here, but the way it begins, you're just going to work with two stitches at a time, and we're working into the back loop of two stitches at a time. So just go right into the back of those two stitches, okay? one and two, and we're going to knit those two stitches together. Pull up our loop, and normally you might kind of just pull through one and then continue on and let them drop, but in this case, we're actually going to elongate and make that stitch just a little bit longer to uh, work in our looseness. If you make it too tight, you will have that bind off issue. So now what we do is just let only one stitch drop off our needle. See how only one is going across? And now we're going to work that next stitch again with the stitch after that. So you're gonna work into the back loop of the next two stitches, knit those two stitches together, pull up a loop, and then let only one drop off, okay? Do that again, knit into the back loop of both stitches together, pull up a loop, 
make it nice and loose, and drop only one off. So when you stare at your work, if you've got one loop down like this, then you know that you've already um, worked it and dropped one off and you're ready to begin the repeat. So just simply repeat all the way across, knitting two together in the back loop, drop one stitch off, leave the remaining, and then work it again. You're gonna do that all the way until the last two stitches and then you'll uh, knit the last stitch just as normal. So go ahead and uh, work those stitches, pause your video and I'll meet you for the last two stitches and I'll show you how to do that. See you soon. Be sure and make sure that this is loose when you pull up a stitch, just like this and drop it off. We'll see you in a moment. All right, we're on our last two stitches. I've already dropped off that last stitch here and uh, we're ready to work into the last two stitches. Go into the back loop, knit two together, only let one drop off, then we have one stitch left and we're just going to knit that with just a regular knit stitch in the front. And that's all. Then we'll turn our work over and we're going to go to row two. Now it'll look like it's sort of jogged over and that's okay. So row two is going to be uh, something similar except your uh, purling, okay? Just a, a regular purl two together except you're just going to drop off one stitch only like the row before. So go ahead and purl those two together, slide it to the end, and let only one drop off, okay? Go into the front of the next two stitches, purl two together, let one drop off. I actually think the purl two together is actually a little easier. Purl two together, one drop off, purl two together, one drop off, and just keep going. And that's it. So you're gonna continue that all the way until the end. And the very last stitch, you will be working as a uh, purl one stitch, and that's it. So go ahead and keep working, pause your video. I'll meet you on the last couple of stitches and we'll just do that together. All right, see you in a moment. We're on our last two stitches and you're simply going to purl these two together, dropping one of the stitches off and then purl the last stitch as normal. That's it. So just continue repeating that two stitch repeat until you have your desired length. And then you're just going to bind off as normal. And I'm going to go ahead and bind off right now. If you find after you've bound off, it's just way too big. Of course, you can redo it, obviously, but you can just knit two together at the ends and it should kind of pull in those two ends that might need a little bit of adjusting. But if it's way too much, you can do my little trick um, where you knit two together across the whole thing. I just don't think it has that great of a look to it, but if you're just sewing it against something else, then you really don't need to worry about that. You could even just use a crochet hook to crochet across the whole thing if you needed to. But as long as you been loose with your stitches you should be no problem so let's go ahead a regular bind off we're just going to knit one and then knit the next stitch move the first loop over the second and then move on knit the next stitch move the first loop over the second and move on you just continue that until you have no stitches left and then pull through and I'll show you what mine looks like here in a moment see you soon all right, on those last two stitches, I just pulled on through and I wanted you to see what this looks like. It's not blocked. You can see that it does curl on the ends, so I need to lay it flat here to see. But uh, you can see how it flares out just a hair on the side. So you can just knit two together at the beginning uh, of the bind off and at the end of the bind off, and then that would pull that in just a little bit. And then for the most part, this is actually fine. It's just curling. Uh, so my tension was um, really done well in the middle of here. But let's say yours is really rolling and flaring out a lot. Then you would need to do what I did in this other sample here where I basically just knit two together as I bound off. And you can see it makes a difference here. But if it's sewn into a project, it won't really matter as much. Uh, this one here, I uh, knit two together a couple of times at the end to sort of solve for that issue. And it was fine. So you can um, kind of finish angle that a little bit but again the main thing is that you keep it nice and loose in the main stitch pattern and this is just really a note to all those tight knitters out there not everybody's a tight knitter but if you are 
I just wanted you to really know about that because there are tutorials out there that don't really tell you that. And I think that you should know that information. So if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please hit the like button, hit that boop and share it with someone that um, you think may have had issue with um, the herringbone in the past. I hope that this has helped you. I'd love to see what you've made. So if you want to tag me on Instagram at goodknit kisses, that would be wonderful and comment down below and let me know if you enjoyed this or not. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.